we're going to make cyanotypes today. We're going to start from scratch. What's a cyanotype? This is a cyanotype. It's basically just a blue and white image that has been made using the sun only and developed with water. So let's make some cyanotype paper. We start with the paper substrate. This is the medium, of, this is the, the thing we're going to apply cyanotype chemistry to. Uh, this is eight and a half inches by five and a half inches. And it's a pretty good size in general for cyanotype. You can put them in your pocket if you fold them up. They don't make a giant you know, mess when you're making them. They're small enough to manage. So we're going to brush cyanotype chemistry onto this paper. We're going to do that using this scale and this bucket and these two chemical compounds. One of them is called potassium ferrocyanide and the other is ferric ammonium citrate. When we combine both of these in equal measure into this bucket, we get a light sensitive solution we can brush onto this paper with this. This is called a hake brush, which is a regular paint brush that has no metal in it. The metal is going to react with the potassium ferrocyanide, no, with the ferric ammonium citrate, ferric meaning iron. So we don't want that. We want the only reactions to come from the sun and the water, not the paintbrush's metal. So, a hockey brush is a good choice if you're getting into the medium of cyanotype. Let's add equal parts of our part A and part B solution to this bucket here that's on a scale that I have zeroed out just now. And we'll add, I don't know, whatever that is. Looks like 20. Okay, nice. So we'll add another 20 of the part B. Potassium, or ferric ammonium citrate. Yeah, that's some good pouring. That's a good pour. That's almost an oxymoron. Now we have our uh, pre-mixed cyanotype chemistry, and here's what it looks like. It's, it's, it's kind of a yellow-green, I call it a tennis ball color, if you have those color tennis balls in your world, which I think most people do. This is the paper, this is the brush, this is the chemistry, and this is a pizza box. The pizza box is going to keep everything neat. So we should call it a Nizza box. So let's open up our Nizza box to keep things neat. And you can see inside it is anything but neat. But that's because I've used this to prevent a mess in other instances making cyanotype paper. That was pretty cool. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to move that there. I'm going to take out some of these sheets. And if you're watching this and saying, well, I'm never going to want to make this paper myself, you're in luck. I sell this paper. If you go to lightprintpaper.com, you can get as much of this paper as you'd like. All right. I'm just going to brush like that. I'm going to brush all the way down and off and then over to uniformly coat. There we go. Do it again. So I've done 12 of these sheets and while they're drying I'm gonna make some 4 by 6 smaller cyanotypes. So we're working with a giant piece of cardboard that's got all this white Sticky tack on it. Boom, boom, boom. Take the scale away for now. So this is the sticky tack that I'm using. And it's just a, it's a white colored, you know, you kind of, you kind of work it a little bit, get it all warm, and then you can stick it. And then it'll hold down whatever you put on top of it. These are four by six ruled index cards. Now we have all these cyanotype cards that don't have any cyanotype medium on that yet, them yet, but they've all been secured. And that's important. They need some, some security in order to do that. So now I can go like that because I have secured these ones to the cardboard. So I can just kind of brush with impunity and not think about, you know, are they going to curl? Are they going to get away from me? They still might get away from me. They still might curl. They still might have too much chemistry on them, but that's okay. The important thing is there's an order 
and a, a system in place. So it's not just chaos. I would say now our cyanotype cards are finished. So we can just stack them up because they're, they're dry enough. Now they can be stacked. And we're going to just leave them, leave them in a darker environment for a bit to fully dry. And then they'll be ready for us to go experiment with. We still have some cyanotype chemistry left. We're going to brush it onto big paper now. All right. So these are giant 16 by 20, I believe, cyanotype pages that I've coated on one side. And now we're going to coat them on the back. So here it is. Here's our, our pizza box slash pizza box. And we've got these one-sided cyanotypes that we're going to take away. There we go. All right. So now we cover it. So we did one side already. We're going to do the back side. With this, we have a decent amount of surface area, so we can really load this brush up. There we go. Got that one. Let's do the other one, which is probably under. No, it's not under there. Is it under here? Yes, it is. So we've got these two pages. We're going to go let them dry somewhere else. Try to brush away when you brush. That way you're not encouraging flying particles of photographic chemistry to, to hit you in the, in the face or the, anywhere else on your person. So brush away, brush away, brush away for your safety. There we go. More pizza boxes for neat sizing. That one's even raised. That's so fancy. All right, we got one more box here, which is good because we're going to use it to do one more batch of paper size. 14 by 11 pages, and we're going to leave these with a white border. One -na 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 -na. These ones will have that, that finished appearance when they're all, once they've been developed, it'll kind of look like these are already framed, because they are. So let's see how many 4x6 index card size we did. One, two, three, four rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So this is 44 plus one, two, three, four. So that's 48 plus 40 plus one. We did almost 50 of these index card sizes today. So now we can put them away. Now let's take a look at how many of the eight and a half by 11, no, the eight and a half by five and a half sheets we made. Did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sixteen of the one-sided sheets. These are the eleven by fourteens. We did ten of those. Now we got the big ones, the sixteen by twenties. So we did six single-sided cyano sheets and four double-sided cyano sheets in the 16 by 20 size. 